Well, may I say happy Mother's Day to all the moms who are here today. We are here to honor moms and to worship Jesus. And uh, the two go very well together. Um, as we always do, we have a time of superlatives, uh, is what we call them, a time to recognize some special moms. At the end of service, you'll have a gift that is available for you, and we'll tell you more about that at the end. But uh, we wanted to just honor some of the moms specifically. And so we're going to begin with uh, one of the cherished places, the oldest mom here today. And so let's start out with the age of 75 years old. If you're 75 or older, will you please stand? All right. Let's give them a round of applause. Stay standing. Stay standing. Now, uh, if you are 80 or above, remain standing. All right. All right. All right. There's Miss Mary on the other side. I thought, wow, we have all the ladies on one side. Thanks for that. If you are, uh, if you are 80, 82 or older, remain standing. All right. Anybody besides Miss Mary who's 82 or older? Miss Mary? Do you mind at this age asking her for telling us how old you are? 87. 87. All right. And Penny, I know you're helping out there. Uh, we have on the front table, we have some, some uh, ready-to-go flowers in a, in a vase that you can take home. We have some planting flowers which are some tulips, and we have uh, some more planting flowers, which are purple. I don't know what they are. <laughs> so, just saying. Oh, which one do you think Mary would like? <laughs> one of the planting ones. All right. <laughs> At 87, it really doesn't matter, does it, which one? All right. You're going to have some yellow tulips, all right? So I'll set those right back there. <clears throat> and then we're going to go from the other end of the spectrum to the newest mom, okay? Not the youngest mom, but the newest mom, which means you, uh, you've had a child within the last, let's say, five years. If you have a five-year-old or younger, will you please stand, moms? All right, they need a round of applause right there. <laughs> All right, if you have a child that's three years older or younger, remain standing. All right, two years older or younger, remain standing. Do you have a baby that is one year old or less? All right, now we need to go up here. <laughs> Breezy, how old is your? Nine months. Miriam? Six months. Six months. All right. Well, let's uh, congratulate these ladies. <clears throat> Miriam, which, Miriam, which flower would you like? The purple ones? We don't know what they are. Or this bouquet? <laughs> All right. So these will be back here, and you can get those after service. All right. And now we have the purple ones. <clears throat> and it's going to the mom whose son or daughter came the farthest to be with her today. And so if you came in to be with your mom today on, a, on this uh, Mother's Day, uh, why don't you just stand? If you came to be with your mom today, please stand. Oh, come on. I know more than that. Breezy, stand back up. I know you came to be with your mom. <clears throat> There's others. All right. Now we're going to see how far you came. Breezy, how far did you come? Just off of 30. <laughs> Just off of 30. All right. Hey, you came. All right. Aren't we glad she came? Yes, we are. <clears throat> Brandon, how far did you come today? From North Canton. All right. And your mom lives in Streetsboro, right? But you met her here today at church from North Canton. 
Let's give him a round of applause. And Brandon, for your mom, I don't think you'll want these purple flowers, okay? <laughs> all right. We do congratulate all the moms this morning. It is special to be able to, uh, to see what God is doing in your life another year, and we thank you for that. This morning I have one more recognition, and I'll ask if Whitney and Jared Holiday will come forward. This coming weekend is a time when we are having our marriage conference. We have uh, 18 couples that are going to be here in this room uh, Friday and Saturday. And I had talked to uh, Whitney last Sunday uh, about uh, coming and being a part of the marriage conference. And uh, she was excited about that and was going to, uh, to attend. Except Jared got word this week that he is going to be deployed to Kuwait in just a few weeks and uh, they're not going to be able to make it next weekend. So you got some training to do before you go. Yeah. And he is going with the Air Force out of Dayton, right? Yeah, out of uh, wright Patterson. Okay, out of Wright-Patterson. And so um, we wanted to be able to, to give them some marriage advice uh, before you go. <laughs> All right. And we also have uh, with us this morning a couple of ladies named Maude and Myrtle. They're a part of, uh, of a, a play that's going to be here in another couple of weeks, and they're going to come and share some marriage advice with this dear couple, all right? Everybody hang on. And you will really live happily ever after. Yeah. Well, maybe you're not in shining armor and going to ride on a slow turtle. You don't know. Maybe you're lost away in a forest somewhere. Well, maybe you're going to come to place in life and you just say, forget about love. I just want a full in chocolate. <laughs> marriage, it's hard work, but a good marriage is worth it. Mm -hmm. As my dearly departed husband used to say, without hard work, Nothing grows but weeds. I don't think anyone here wants a marriage that's overgrown with dandelions and spilled with weeds. Many people spend more time working on their wedding than they do on working on their marriage. To have a great marriage, you've got to put some elbow grease in it. Really. We believe that the best marriage is made in heaven. Oh, yeah, but don't forget about it. Well, in the lightning also comes from heaven. <laughs> so that's why we're holding a marriage workshop. So y'all learn how to be a good wife. Actually, a good husband. Okay, so in our marriage retreat, the first thing we're going to do is you've got to choose your future wife wisely. Remember, there's much more to a person than meets the eye. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, mm -hmm. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. That's right. Many a man fall in love with a dimple, and that's a mistake. <laughs> and they end up marrying a whole girl. <laughs> you know, you need to seek God's will, God's standard when making an important decision like this. Remember, beauty is only skin deep. Character is more important. If beauty's on the skin, then you must be inside out. <laughs> Which brings us to our next point. Let me get to the next point. They got to overlook each other's faults and their mother's mom. When people first fall in love, it's, oh, it's easy to overlook the bad. They say, love is blind, but marriage is a real eye opener. Yeah, well, people are illogical, you know, and they're inconsiderate and self centered. And you may have noticed this, but we need to love them anyway. In fact, it's when people deserve to love the most and support the least, that's when they need it the most. Gotta love each other. 
The Bible tells us to forgive others with the same love God has forgiven us. <clears throat> Sometimes that means overlooking the little things that annoy us. Yeah, good old Benjamin Franklin, he said, keep your eyes wide open before marriage and half shut afterwards. In fact, I think a good marriage is between a blind cop and a deaf husband. <laughs> Speaking of deaf husbands, Oh, yeah. Let's talk about communication. Communication, we'll talk about that. <laughs> good we'll communications talk. is one of the important things in every good marriage. Mm -hmm. It's not good to let problems fester like an open sore that oozes <laughs> pus and itches. It's better to talk about the things that bother, even if your spouse doesn't seem to be listening. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Let me tell you, there's a secret copy in me. I'm going to tell you the best way. Um, to get most husbands to suggest something is to tell them to go over to do it. And then they'll do it. Thank you, Murder. Well, yeah, I know. I know that. If you want your spouse to listen, just talk in your sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Myrtle. Now, if you're upset, wait until you have calmed down. Don't talk about things that bother you when you're angry. And remember, everyone makes mistakes. That's right. All men make mistakes. <laughs> they, they do. The only thing is, is that married men find out about it a whole lot sooner. Okay, now we're going to talk Wise about Wise communications is made in two parts. Having a lot to say and not saying it. All right, we're going to talk about doing things together. Go ahead. It's important to do things together that both of you enjoy. Yeah, like presenting your in-laws and watching the children. But it's also important to do other things. You can lend your husband a hand with outside chores and take it out of the trash. Yeah, sometimes the best helping hand is a good form of pooch. <laughs> in closing, spend time with your spouse. When the work is done, it's important to relax together. Some people go fishing. Some people work in the garden. Just remember, what's relaxing to one person, it may not be relaxing to the other one. Yeah, to a worm, digging in the hard ground is more relaxing than going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so we've we, we got this task to do this is for you to take with you. You want to hand it to them. We got rolls. <laughs> and we got preserves. Oh, she spent so much time on those. Let me see. No, Myrtle, they harvest beets. Oh, those are beets. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. The one thing about harvest beets is if you have to take them with you, it doesn't matter because you know the longer you let them out, the more they pickle. <laughs> Just like a marriage, you know, they get better yeah. and better yeah. and better. <laughs> and so. It won't hurt you either. Now I'm going to put that back in here, Mark. Mark, here, Mark, give me this. Tell me about this. Spam. Good old spam. <laughs> Who doesn't love it? You just flip this little key off and just take you a big old hunk of that out, Jerry, and you just look and thank Whitney's there with you and tell her that's the best meal you ever had. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, oh, this is the best special. Did you make these? Come on, I did you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Maude and Myrtle. You can see them in Smoke on the Mountain on uh, June 1st and 2nd right here in our, uh, in our sanctuary. Um, I don't know how much you're going to be able to use all those things. <laughs> <laughs> but it's our hope that you guys spend a little time uh, in a marriage retreat by yourselves. And so on behalf of Orville Baptist Church, we're giving you a couple of days away and a night uh, up in Putin Bay, Ohio. 
And so uh, all expenses paid for you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Let's have a word of prayer. Almighty God, it's good to come into your presence, to come with the family of God that you have put together, and to be able to, yes, laugh. It's good to be able to laugh. It's good to be able to know that we serve a God of joy, not a God of, of, um, of, of uh, disappointments, and a God that, that uh, has a harsh hand upon us. He is a God of love that allows us to enjoy the day. And so, Lord, today, as we, uh, as we gather today in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you would uh, receive the honor and glory that is due your name. Father, may each mom who's here today find, find a special blessing because they have been here, because, Lord, their loved one that they have given birth to, son or a daughter, uh, is uh, going to make a contact with them. Father, uh, I know that there's some ladies who are here also that, that do not have children, or ladies who have lost children. And Lord, I know that there are some that, uh, that just today is a hard day. And I pray your blessing upon them as well. Father, may you give them, uh, Lord, a, a sense of knowing that they have a family that's far greater than just a physical family. They have a family that, is, that they are a part of in which we can gather together and be able to celebrate one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, Lord, today, as we gather this offering now, I pray, the Lord, that you would use it for your kingdom. Father, may, uh, may your people give as you have instructed us to. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
1 Corinthians 13 says this about love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. When it comes to the Bible's most well-known passage about love, mothers are a beautiful example of the high calling of love that is described here.
children enjoy building blocks. One upon the other, they can make words out of them, little wooden pieces of block stacked upon one another, and before you know it, you can make all kinds of things your imagination will allow you to make. This morning, I don't want us to use our imagination. I want us to use praise. And so we're going to use the building blocks of A to Z and to be able to praise our moms. I'm going to give you a letter, and you are going to uh, give me a word that goes along with it. Just hold your hands up so we don't all go at the same time. That might be a little confusing. But I am going to ask if you would say something that this letter begins with, with your mom. Okay? So, we're going to start out with the letter A. So, who's got something about their mom that you could say using the letter A? Tim. My mother's first name is Audrey. All right. Going to call her by name, Audrey. All right? Adoring. Mom always adored us kids. All right. She's adoring. All right, how about B? This shouldn't be that difficult. It really shouldn't. Charlotte. Beautiful. Beautiful. Your mom was beautiful. Praise God. All right. Judy May. Blessed. Blessed. All right. Wonderful. Somebody else? Let's go on to C. Give me a C word for your mom. Brother John. Caring. Caring. Linda. Clean freak. Clean freak. <laughs> All right. Good. Yeah. You know. Not get that from her either. All right. Creative. Creative. All right. Jane. Christian. Christian. Wonderful. We're getting it. All right. D. D. Yes. Devoted. Devoted. And your mom was. Yes, she was. Another D word. Yes. Devoted. Devoted. All right. Hey, that's all right. We can have more than one devoted mom. Amen. Yes, you can. Yeah. All right. E. Yes. Encouraging. How many moms have, were, had an encouraging mom? All right. Praise God for that. Another E. F. Ray. Faithful. All right. Somebody else had that. Yes. Forgiving. Forgiving. Oh, great. Fun. All right. Wonderful. Sounds like a great household to grow up in. G. Yes, Penny. A great cook. A great cook. Yeah. All right. Jesse. Godly. I agree. Giving. All right. H. Yes. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> you were waiting for that too, weren't you? Yes, that's right. Hilarious. Yes. Hard working. Hard working. Yeah. Hopeful. Hopeful. Penny. Helpful. Helpful. Wonderful. Happy. 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 Yes, that's right, Matt. I. Yes. Incredible. Incredible. Yes. Yes. Intelligent. Intelligent. Okay. I heard somebody else. Independent. Independent. All right. J. Yes. Joyful. Joyful. K. Kind. Somebody? Somebody say kind? Okay. Kathy? L. Yes. Loving. Loving. Somebody else? Loyal. Loyal. Wonderful. Wonderful. M. And we're here because of moms. All right. <laughs> that says a lot, doesn't it? In three letters. Moms. Yeah. N. Needed. Needed. Yes. O. Outstanding. All right. Great. Thank you for that. P. 
prayerful, precious, precious. Patient. patient, good. Q. Yes. Quiet. Quiet. Guidance. Guidance. Okay. Queen. Somebody have a queen for mom? Yeah. Yeah. R. R. Risen. 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 Resolute. Okay. Very good. Thanks for the help there. Yes. Resourceful. Resourceful. Yes. Reliable. Good, good, good. Yes, Jake. Radiant. Radiant. Wonderful. Thanks. R S. Pardon? Supportive. Supportive. Yes. Gene? Selfless, good, good, good. I bet there's others here. Sweet, Sweet. yeah, sharing, yeah, supportive. Yes, sower. sower, yeah. That's a day gone by, I think, isn't it, for a lot of people, yeah. T, yes, G, uh, D, trusting. trusting. Ian, talkative, talkative. all right. <laughs> there's a few of those in this room too, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, Josh, teacher, teacher. <coughs> thankful. thankful, all right, and yes, I wrote down the alphabet so I wouldn't miss any, okay, <coughs> you, you, yes, understanding, understanding. breezy, all right, understanding, good, V, victorious, victorious. All right, W, yes, wisdom. wisdom, good, watchful, watchful. Tim, witty, witty. yes, wonderful. wonderful, X, extraordinary, <laughs> all right, I looked one up. <clears throat> Zena do, do Kyle. Zena de Kyle means friendly with strangers. Friendly with strangers. Anybody have a mom that was friendly with strangers? Why? Why? Not asking why, I'm just the letter Y. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Young at heart, yes. Yes. Yielding. Yielding. Okay. And Z. Yes. Zipporah. Zipporah. What does that mean? My mom's name. Oh, that's your mom's name. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that means. All right. I got it. Thank you, Femi. From South Africa. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All these are words of affirmation. All of them are words of praise. And this is Mother's Day, and this is what it's about. It is giving her the praise that is due her. The passage we're going to look at today helps especially us men and children to be able to do exactly what we're called to do is to give them praise. That's not just because of a national holiday in the United States. That's because of God's word. And this is a passage of scripture that is not looked upon favorably by a lot of women. But I, give me a chance, okay? Give me a chance today to be able to change your mind about the, uh, the excellent woman in Proverbs 31. And so if you will turn to that. And stand with me as we read God's word. We'll begin in verse 10. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. 
Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings good, not harm, all the days. She brings good to him, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with, her, with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it, and out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. She sets out vigorously. Uh, she sets out about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes clothings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She, reach, or she watches rather over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. You may be seated. I will say my wife does not like this passage. <clears throat> She just doesn't. She never has. And it may be because uh, on Mother's Day, uh, my pastor back in Indiana would preach on this quite often on Mother's Day. I hope he's not watching today. <laughs> <clears throat> I think also this woman seems like a perfect wife and a perfect mother. And who would want or who would not want to be talented and gifted and productive and strong and caring and fearless like this woman? Doesn't have one negative thing to say about her in all of the verses. But as normal human beings, many women cringe when they seemingly see this perfect woman as a, an example set before them. She can do and does just about everything. She makes clothing and she spins the yarn to do it. She buys a field and plants a vineyard. Believe it or not, we do not have one vineyard in our house. Amazing. <clears throat> she has a good business sense. She wakes up when it is dark my wife slept in yesterday, first time in three weeks. <clears throat> but she also works at night. I don't know many people, many ladies, who would be a morning person and a night person at the same, in the same person, but this woman appears to be. But when it comes to looking at this passage and feeling inadequate, let me just say that God does not put his word for us to feel inadequate. There is no place in scripture where we are to feel guilty for gifts that are not given to us and not having the gifts that God doesn't share with us. Or to be able to have the physical ability to do what apparently this woman can do. So if Proverbs 31 only makes you feel guilty and only makes you feel inadequate, I think we have a wrong understanding of Proverbs 31 and this woman. And so let me give you three reasons why I think that you can look at this differently this year, ladies, and maybe in the years to come, as God has shown me 
in my study on this passage. And the first one is this. It is who is writing this and who is being written to. So in order to find that, you need to go back to the beginning of, of Proverbs 31. It says the, the sayings of King Lemuel, Le, Lemuel. These are a king who is writing. And he is writing to his wife. Look at verse 29, back of the passage. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. He is writing to his wife. This is a man who didn't have a Hallmark store to be able to go get a card. He's writing it out for his wife. This is like building blocks that we just went over building blocks that we remember about moms. Affirmation after affirmation, praise after praise. So when the king starts to write, he shares what blesses him about his wife. How he sees the beauty in her and in what she and who she is and what she does. Second thing is this, what is he writing? What is he writing? He is writing under the inspiration of God. It is for us today. It is useful and profitable for us to be reading this today. It is not meant for us to have guilt or blame because we do not make our own clothes or make our own bedding. It's not for us to have uh, have hardships because of the things that she does but we can't do. What the king is writing is really a poem. And he didn't use the English alphabet, he used the Hebrew alphabet. 22 letters, beginning with Aleph and ending with Tav. 22 letters and each one of the 22 verses are a part of his poem. He's using it as an acrostic. This is what you mean to me, honey. And he writes it down. Do you see why that it would all be good? Who is going to write a letter of love on Mother's Day or a letter of love to his wife and put in negative things? That doesn't happen. I have my letter for my wife right here. I have it right here to give to her just a little later. And no, I won't read it to you. <laughs> but it has not one negative thing in it. And you know why? Because today is a day of praise. Today is a day of honor. Today is a day to give her the praise for what she has done. There's a complimentary chapter for men in scripture. We'll not hit that. But I will let you know, not there to make us look bad. It's there to be able to say, this is what a godly man looks like. In this passage, this is what I see in a godly woman that you are to me. And over and over, as he writes this pro poem, he puts in not the bad stuff, he puts in the good stuff. And you would do wise men and children to do the same. Otherwise, you may not eat this week. <clears throat> Sometimes we need to write praise. We need to write honor. We need to speak blessing to our wives and our moms. Look at verse 10 in this passage. A wife of noble character, who could find? She is worth far more than rubies. The king is saying, a wife like I have is hard to find. But I have found her. And she is worth more than rubies. And she is worth more than precious jewels. And she is worth far more than any precious stones that I can imagine. 
What value would you place on your wife? And I'm not kidding. Not a time for jokes today, men. It's a time to praise. It's a time to be able to find what you see about your children's mom and to be able to say thank you. I'm going to show you why in just a second. <clears throat> Does she have any of the qualities? Does she have many of the qualities that are here? Look at verse 11 in this passage. Her husband has full confidence in her. Do you have confidence in your wife? If you do, praise her. Not everyone has that. Verse 12, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Does your wife bring you good, husbands? Children, does your mom bring you good? If she does, she is worthy of praise. Verse 13, she selects wool and flax and works with, uh, works with eager hands. I doubt that your mom or your wife works with wool and flax, although she may. But she may work eager with her hands. Does she bring food from afar? And it doesn't matter if that is Bueller's or Walmart or Sam's store or from Amazon delivered to your front porch. It is your wife who is bringing it to you. She is worthy of your praise. Maybe she hasn't. She hasn't um, been one who st uh, stayed up late at night. She gets up while it is still dark. I know for a fact my wife worked third shift for a lot. She got up when it was day. It doesn't say that is, this is a time thing. This says, is your wife about working? Is she about laboring? Has she been a wife that has worked in her life with her hands? Maybe she hasn't considered a field and bought it. Maybe you don't have a vineyard either. But she sets out to work. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees trading. She stays up late at night doing that mother thing or that wife thing. Those kind of things are listed and those kind of things are what the king sees in this one whom he loves. He says she is far more valuable than even rubies, even precious stones. Number three of this is, this passage was not primarily written for women. I believe the Lord spoken to me and said, it's primarily written for men and children. It's primarily written for men and children and not for women. And here's two reasons. Wives and moms, this passage was never meant to be a checklist for you to stack yourself up against. This is not the perfect woman. Only God is perfect. And Proverbs 31 isn't a woman that the standard is a standard of perfection. Jesus is the standard for perfection. So if you feel like you can't measure up, you aren't supposed to. God has made you to be you. He has given you gifts. Be the best you that you can be, moms. The second reason I think this is for us as men and children is this. This is written to instruct husbands and children to praise their moms and their wives. Look at the very end. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all, the king writes. Charm is dece deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. A woman who fears the Lord. Let me ask you, does your wife fear the Lord? Does your mom love the Lord? Does your mom love Jesus? That verse tells us that that one thing is the reason why we should praise her. If she didn't get anything else right, if she got that right, it's the most important thing. And let me tell you this. 
everything else that comes out of this woman's character and everything that he sees in her all comes out of that, ma that main point. Does she fear the Lord? Are you saying that people can't do those things? If they don't, if your mom doesn't fear the Lord, if your wife doesn't fear the Lord, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that she's got a heart to do it. There is a difference in doing things and doing them with a the right heart. And can I tell you something else, husbands and kids? Moms and wives are a lot better at this than we are. They're a lot better at giving praise and honor and glory on special events in your life. Think about this. Think about your birthday. In our house, we have a, a wife and a mom who decorates the house for everybody's birthday with streamers and paper that hangs from the top of the ceilings. Get a cake. It's amazing. And oftentimes it doesn't come back around the other way. There is unlimited praise sometimes that goes out from moms and wives that does not come back around to them. Can I tell you this? Today's your day. Today's your day. Don't stop today, but today's your day. If you have a question as to what you ought to do, ask somebody. Ask me, I'll tell you, yeah, I'll do it. If you've come to your mind that, hey, I think I, I would do this, but it's way out of my comfort range, just do it. As long as you are doing what the Lord says, <clears throat> but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Look at verse 31. Give her the reward she has earned. Give it back to her as a reward. And let her works bring her praise. Maybe not at the city gate, but maybe at your dinner table. Maybe just between you and your mom. It's interesting how he puts this together. Charm, which means attraction, appeal, that magic thing, is deceitful. It's misleading. It's deceptive. In beauty, attractiveness, listen to this young guy he's talking about the dimple. You're going to marry the whole woman? Beauty, <clears throat> attractiveness, is vain, which means it is hopeless, it is futile, it is useless. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. You see, there are women out there that are beautiful on the outside and beautiful on the inside. I will tell you, according to this passage, the ones who are beautiful on the outside, it is fading away. We get a little older, the beauty fades. It is sometimes something that you cannot change. If you're here today and you're a young man and you're looking for a wife, listen to the king today. Find a wife who is beautiful on the inside as well as maybe on the outside. Because if you find one who is just beautiful on the outside and not on the inside, there is a time coming when her beauty on the outside is going to match that as what's on the inside. And you are not going to find joy in your marriage and joy in your home. But if you have been blessed to have a wife who loves the Lord, let me tell you, you have a real blessing from God. The woman who fears the Lord in this verse says, this is the reason she is to be praised. Moms, do you fear the Lord? I hope you do. I hope you love him. He calls us to love him more than we love any other relationship here upon the earth. And if you love him, may you receive the praise today for the beauty of